Hello chess friends and welcome to the Art of Chess channel and welcome back to our Come the Chess Games Play by Computer series. So in this series we're following some great games that have been played by top engines and today I've decided to show a really wild attacking game uh, played by the Stockfer 15 engine against another top engine of Hade. It's a beautiful game in which uh, Stockfer will destroy its opponent in a beautiful Evans Gambit game and we haven't covered uh, really for a while now an Evans Gambit game and I'm really glad I will show you this one because this is really a uh, brutal brutal sick attacking chess that's Stockfish performs here and I think in the near future we can really expect maybe the Evans Gambit or maybe even the King's Gambit maybe even uh, when it comes to D4 play we can maybe also I think consider maybe the King's Indian as a sort of an opening of the future because I think this kind of openings are still unexplored there are so many sidelines there are so many variations there's so many opportunities for white and for black that haven't been explored so far I think uh, so that's why I think we can expect maybe even in top grand master level more more and more of this uh, Evans Gambit games, maybe even King's Gambit games. I would love to see that because uh, these games are very attractive. These games are really, really uh, sharp, and that's why I think we miss them sometimes um, in a decent level of chess. But of course, the Stockfish 15 engine can play such an opening. Can basically Stockfish 15 can play whatever Stockfish 15 wants to play. And here you see also how Stockfish handles this tactical wild opening uh, in a beautiful way. So let's see now the game Stockfish 15 against Rofhada in a beautiful. Evans Gambit game. So here uh, all Stockfish opened with the move e4. We have e5 by Rofhade, knight to f3, knight to c6, bishop to c4, bishop to c5. We have now the Gioco Piano, the Italian game is on the board. And now comes, of course, the beautiful uh, Evans Gambit move b4. Basically, uh, it's one of the gambits uh, that you have to accept, I think. If you don't do that, then uh, white is gaining simply too many spaces on the queen side. So that's why you have to react. And that's the beauty about the Evans Gambit because uh, it becomes already. Uh, a wild brutal game so c3 main move bishop to a5 staying is st on this diagonal where of course the bishop is still attacking the king we have now d4 he takes d4 and now uh here it's sort of a main line we have now the move queen to b3 targeting uh now the pawn on, on um, uh, f7 so that's why black needs now to make a reaction the main move here in this types of structures is queen to f6 so protecting simply the f7 pawn and now king side casting and okay let's talk and evaluate the position a little bit about this Evans Gambit. I think it's very important to notice what's going on on the board. So after move Queen to F6, notice that um, Black has taken a natural square for the Knight. Uh, that's I think one of the positional problems in Black's position. So the Knight is not coming on the most active square. So the Knight can be developed, of course, on E7. Nothing wrong. Many times it's a good square, but when the Knight is on E7, it's not attacking uh, the other side of the board. Of course, the Knight would be much much better attacking already the center of the board so that's why it's one positional problem in black's camp but well, the other thing i think we have to notice is of course the lack of the activity of black's pieces it's a compensation that white gained of course for giving up the pawn in an early stage of the game but uh, the bishop on c8 is still undeveloped and of course uh, the bishop on a5 is also a little bit loose on the board the knight on c6 is perfectly fine of course the queen's activity is also perfectly fine so uh, here, uh, White's main, uh, main uh, beautiful thing, I think, in the position is, of course, the peace activity. The bishop will come into the game. We have opportunities, maybe, after something like uh, D takes C3, kicking away the queen, getting the knight into the game. So, the activity that White gains is, I think, the main compensation here in this types of position. So, in the continuation uh, in the game, uh, Rofhade played bishop to B6, still a very often and very popular line. If you play D takes C3, uh, if you take out further the pawn here on c3 actually this wouldn't be good because you're getting destroyed with these types of tactics bishop to g5 now you have to move the queen and now with knight to c3 the knight is coming into the game knight to d5 knight to b5 our opportunities uh the queen is still a little bit loose on the board for instance you can maybe even try to take it out you can maybe try to take out the knight but now for queen to c3 knight to f6 look at this e5 is coming into the game you have to make a reaction still 
the king is still in the center this files will be open the bishop pair is very active so this is not something that you want to get here from black's perspective notice that still this bishop is stuck here on the starting square on the square c8 so in the continuation after uh, move king said calcing as we said bishop to b6 was played by the father simply rerouting the bishop and gaining some kind of an activity here on this tag so we have now e5 so stockfish is saying you stayed a little bit too long with the king in the center now i will open the center i will at least try to open the center uh, so far of how they re reacted correctly here because of course you cannot take the pawn on e5 because you get uh, pinned here on the e file rook to e1 is going to happen even if you protect the knight with d6 c takes uh, d4 will happen the knight is still lost here bishop to d4 of course doesn't make sense still the knight is covering also this course so it will be game over i think here for black so that's why after move e5 queen to g6 so the queen is okay it's active it's uh, also attacking maybe here the g file but i think this is not an optimal square for the queen because um, the, the need need uh, the queen needs support in order to make some kind of an activity here on the king side so that's why uh the queen is getting pushed away towards uh, the edge of the ward and still a uh, stockfish gained another tempo now also the pawn on e5 creates a space advantage which is also now a huge advantage in the game so in the continuation we have c takes d4 and now nine Knight to a5 attacking the queen and the bishop now finally Rofhade gets at least rid of this uh, light school bishop which is maybe even the most powerful minor piece on the board which is also sort of mainline theory of uh, the Evans gambit if you take instead of this move knight to a5 if you take the pawn on d4 uh, this is again simply too slow the main issue is again that you didn't play active moves here from black's perspective okay you took the pawn knight takes d4 bishop to d4 but look at this now knight to c3 is going to happen again uh, bishop to e5 is not working rook to e1 uh, with these ideas to uh, get pinned here on the e5 with f4 then probably you lose the bishop in the later stage of the game you could maybe try to play knight to e7 uh to finally secure the king by casting but again i think it's a little bit too slow because bishop to a3 uh, would happen and uh, i'm not seeing good ways how to defend its position also uh threats are moves like knight to b5 knight to c7 if you castle you lose the knight uh rook to d1 is going to happen attacking the bishop so uh even i think in some occasions maybe after bishop to c3 queen to c3 f4 f5 all are also ideas so again notice um again i'm pointing out the bishop is stuck here on c8 the bishop is not participating in the game so that's why uh, black has here really a lack of activity so this is not working so after c takes d4 as we said the knight to a5 uh, was the move by rofhade at least getting rid of this annoying bishop on c4 queen to c3 knight takes c4 queen to c4 and now finally knight to e7 so finally uh rofhade is only one move far away from fully uh securing the king from uh of course casting here on the king side so we have bishop to a3 but stockfish is not allowing here black to breathe the so stock which is not allowing here uh black to secure the king we have queen to c6 which is a normal idea uh, a simplification would be perfectly fine if the queens are off the board if uh, suddenly white takes uh, the queen on c6 then i think it's game over for white white has to be active here white has to stay uh with the many pieces on the board white has to keep the pressure in order to have at least some kind of a chance in the game so queen to c6 queen to e2 that's why was played the, by stockfish staying with the queen on the board we have now d5 uh, finally getting this bishop into the game but now after e takes d6 ampasan again stockfish is not allowing a uh, normal development here of blacks we have c takes d6 you have to take out with the pawn and now again a beautiful move d5 and d5 is now opening the position there are now uh two choices you can play of course queen to d7 that was the move that the played but if you play queen to d5 um, then still it gets risky because we get this one knight to c3 you have to move the queen here on e6 again trying desperately here to maybe trade it off to simplify the game but after queen to d2 i'm not seeing good defenses against rook to e1 look at this you can maybe kingside castle finally but now rook to e1 uh, queen to d7 this uh pawn will be taken uh, after queen to d6 look at this bishop to d6 the knight is hanging so this is in my opinion 
game over here for for black knight to c6 then we'll simply take it out rook to f8 king to a bishop takes x f8 the king takes f8 and okay uh black is still uh the bishop pair but i think this should be a winning end game here for uh for white so that's why after move d5 you see you cannot take actually uh with the queen that was a necessary tactic that of course stockfish noticed here we have queen to d7 rook to e1 again not allowing here uh black to breathe again not allowing uh here black to castle so that's why bishop to d8 we have knight to d2 finally developing the bishop and uh the knight and also preparing knight to c4 or knight to e4 in order to continue the pressure uh here around the square d6 so we have now kingside casting knight to c4 and now knight to f5 and now rook from a to c1 uh was played by stockfish and again let's stop and evaluate a little bit the, the, the position so stockfish has here perfect development both rooks are on active files uh, on open files the knight is centralized on c4 the bishop is active on a3 targeting uh here this pawn on d6 this knight is very flexible maybe we can maneuver it if necessary there are also certain tactics that are possible with knight to e5 d takes e5 maybe taking out the rook very important to notice that actually uh, the bishop is also targeting here now the rook on f8 um it's not coming immediately but this uh, tactical shot has to be noticed here because it will play a very important role in the continuation of the game so here stockfish has a beautiful attacking formation although um black has the bishop here black is up a pawn but again black has really some problems how to develop the minor pieces in the game so b6 finally but finally rofhad is trying bishop to b7 at least getting the bishop somehow into the game but again stockwich plays an active move here queen to e4 attacking the knight we have bishop to f6 and now g4 attacking uh here the knight immediately and there are now two things that you can do you can play of course a counter-attack with the move b5 or you can play knight to h4 in the game b5 was played but let's see what happens if you play knight to h4 because there is simply not a better square for the knight if you play um here knight to h6 of course you get g5 and uh here it's a very very messed up position then for for black so that's why you for let's see knight to h4 we play knight takes h4 bishop to h4 and now you lose this pawn that's i think the main issue you can maybe uh move the rook then we attack the rook further because you cannot take here then you get checkmated with queen to e8 that's also a possible tactic maybe you uh after bishop to c7 play again rook to f8 but look at this uh, the knight is coming into the center of the board knight to e5 protects also the pawn on g4 so this should be again a completely a winning game here for white d6 is an opportunity discovered the attack against the rook supporting the bishop so many many opportunities i think here for for white so that's why after move g4 uh Rofhade didn't play the move knight to h4 tried uh, a counter attack but now comes this tactical shot that we have talked about uh now comes this beautiful move knight to e5 and notice now there is a beautiful uh here pressure uh, around this uh, on this long diagonal the the, uh, the rook on f8 is here very very endangered so we have d takes e5 bishop to f8 uh, we have knight to d4 this is everything uh, pretty much forced even if you take now uh here the bishop on f8 it's not getting better in this position of course the knight is hanging we just take queen to f5 queen takes f5 g takes f5 okay you can maybe even take out this one but now also this one is hanging and uh here white has a pass pawn will support it and also with the rook uh, there are threats of knight to c6 of course and in my opinion this is completely again winning game for for white white can also of course play f4 support the knight centralizing uh everything and this is, this should be winning as i said so after move bishop to f8 notice as i said king to f8 is simply too slow so that's why in knight to d4 knight takes d4 we have e takes d4 and now stockfish retreats to b4 and has now in my opinion a dominant position white is up the exchange has still some issues because this is a very powerful pawn that's supported by uh by the bishop and also now finally this bishop will come into the game so uh black has also a certain activity now with the minor pieces black has also simplified the game enough uh, that it cannot be so complicated anymore but uh, here i think also the main strength now of white's position is now the passer on the default which is also supported 
by the bishop and there are also some threats on the on the eighth rank also queen to e8 is now suddenly a threat so again black has to face many many tactical problems so in the continuation we have queen to uh, g4 a uh, check uh, you have to trade off the queens queen to g4 bishop to g4 and now rook to c7 stockfish is getting now a very very active into the game with the rook here on the seventh rank so rook to d8 d6 pushing the pawn further h5 and now f3 beautiful beautiful move here by stockfish uh deflecting the bishop now from uh, from a potential activity uh, if you play bishop takes f3 then you get d7 that's why it was very important to deflect the bishop from this diagonal after d7 you cannot even get it back because we'll simply play rook to e8 you cannot take because of the promotion of the queen you have to step back we just take out the rook and then uh we'll attack also the bishop so it's game over you have to sacrifice i think here the bishop and this should be of course completely winning here for white so uh, from move f3 that's why bishop to e6 <coughs> pardon bishop to e6 had to be played now by Rofhade, but Stockfish simply took out this one and now for move h4 now king to g2 it's now crucial of course to include the king into the game because now the king should not be tolerated as something that you have, have to defend now this uh, this uh, king has to be used in order to attack the position further so we have now h3 we have king to g3 king to h7 so now Rofhade is also getting the king into the game uh, here uh, in this in this beautiful endgame so we have now f4 liberating now also some squares for the king trying to get king to f3 king to e4 and similar stuff so king to g6 we have rook to c1 we have uh, d3 pushing the pawn further rook to d1 attacking now the um pawn we have king to f5 and now rook to c7 here was uh, played by stockfish stockfish kept everything uh, really compact so stockfish is not rushing is saying i will take out the pawn eventually but uh, first i want to regroup all of my pieces getting them on the most active square so king to e4 rook to e1 uh, king to d4 and now king to f3 this is beautiful now again the king is getting more and more centralized and we notice now that also the king on d4 okay it's active but actually it's quite endangered because uh, many checks can happen against the king also there are certain activities with both of the rooks if you play maybe um really in a bad way here from black's perspective i think that in some occasions you can even uh get checkmated so that's why you have to be careful after move king to f3 we have now bishop to d5 by the father but now the king comes still on a beautiful square bishop to e6 doesn't make sense now because we'll simply play f5 then you have to step back and now well, the king comes on f4 so it's uh, the king is getting closer and closer in this type of position so that's why after move king to g4 here bishop to c4 was played by Rofhade, but now a3 supporting simply the bishop and now d2 simply pushing the pawn further even if you try some different ideas king to d5 or something there's always this threat as we said d7 with rook to e8 you have to be careful about this move so uh this is simply not working here for for black so that's why after move a3 we had d2 bishop to d2 and okay Rofhad at least took out also this annoying pawn on d6 but still finally as we said the king is now in the center of the board the king it gets more and more endangered now stockfish noticed certain checkmate patterns here now now bishop to b4 with the preparation to play bishop to c5 rook to d1 are opportunities uh really really uh, beautiful tactical uh, possibilities now are in white's position so rook to d8 you have to step back the rook was under fire uh we have now king to g3 we have king to d3 and now a4 uh here again a beautiful move by stock for 15 in the continuation bishop to d4 was played but uh, let's see if you take b takes a4 the problem is now you get this one and well, you have to step back from the defense of the bishop so the bishop is lost so this is not working so after move a4 bishop to d4 we have uh, a takes b5 bishop to b5 and now a beautiful move here by stock 15 bishop to c5 in the beginning uh we don't know why uh this move was played it's of course a perfect uh, simplification but the problem is now for instance if you retreat here to f6 if you try to 
not uh, trade off the bishops if you try to stay uh, still with the many pieces on the board the problem is now again you get this beautiful move king to f3 the king is getting closer and all this now for instance if you try maybe that something else if you try to uh, trade off the rooks again then uh, you're getting as i said even into a checkmate pattern look at this you can even get this one bishop to e3 now you take out the rook on d1 and now with rook to c1 you can even get checkmated so that's the beauty about the stockfish attack when the king got in the center of the board many many opportunities could have happened so as i said i removed bishop to c5 stunning beautiful move here by stockfish uh, in the continuation we have king to d2 trying to attack the rook but now rook to b1 a counter attack against the bishop bishop has to move here to c4 probably in many occasions you can even just play bishop to d4 if you don't want to calculate too too much here bishop to d4 rook to d4 still i think uh, you have a completely winning endgame but stockfish played of course uh, the correct move bishop to e7 uh, the more uh, uh, the more correct move of course here in the continuation bishop to e7 attacking now the rook rook to d8 we have now bishop to a2 and now rook to c1 uh, again keeping the pieces uh, compact we have rook to a8 and now after move bishop to b4 king to e2 rook to c2 king to d3 was played and after a rook to d2 in this position Rofhada resigned so let's see possible continuations you play king to e4 we played rook to e1 now you have to step back from the defense of the bishop or if you play of course here uh, something like this then bishop to c3 is going to happen still the um, uh, the bishop is hanging so even if you try to include this particular uh, piece into the defense then we can play of course rook to d1 still continuing the pressure and again it's game over so really really wild attack by stockfish really i'm glad that uh, we have seen again a beautiful evans gamut game uh in top angel level still you see it's playable there are certain uh, dangerous uh, opportunities for both sides in an early stage of the game you have to be careful that's i think the beauty about the evans gamut because if you make only one inaccuracy you can get destroyed immediately and i think it should be more and more played in top grand master level maybe a surprise or maybe a uh, wild player like hans niemann could play it i'm not sure but uh, we'll see what what future will bring us uh, in my opinion it's really really something worth to study because the engines are giving us opportunities that i think uh we didn't want to we didn't want to play earlier because we were scared a little bit more uh, to dive into this tactical battles immediately but now you see uh stockfish the beautiful engine can play this types of position and really destroy it. its opponent here with some immortal mortal tactical shots so okay i hope that you enjoyed the game i really enjoyed it a lot interesting ideas uh, of the evans gamut for sure if you want to see more about the evans gamut that we have analyzed here on my youtube chess channel check out our comments chess game so far in this beautiful opening here's the link of our playlist and if you want to see more stockfish and also all some other top engine games check out our comments and chess games with a computer series with some more beautiful tactical and positional games and if you like this content don't forget to subscribe to my channel see you soon with some more videos and chess is the best of course